Hello, hello, hello. Everybody out there. First of all, I want to start out by saying that my anonymous uh, subscriber sent zinnia seeds. So I'll have those to plant. And Claire Quinn, she sent me the um, ingredients for fire cider. The way she fixes it, the way you put all the ingredients in the jar, fill it with vinegar, and leave it sit for 12 weeks. So I'm going to try this as well. But in the meantime, I'll be taking my fire cider. But the ingredients is horseradish, which I've got to buy, garlic, onions, grated ginger, I've got ginger, cinnamon, elderberries I don't have, fresh lemon, fresh orange, 8 to 10 cups organic apple cider, and one half cup raw honey. So I'm going to have to try this. Thank you so much, Claire Quinn, for sending me that. I appreciate all of my um, subscribers that send me stuff. But the topic today is going to be, let me see if I can do something with this camera. It's kind of got my head cut off. <laughs> I mean, I want you to see what I'm doing, but I also don't want the top of my head cut off. But I got a pair of these old coveralls, and they're shorts. And they're way too small for me since I've gained so much weight because I used to be itty-bitty tiny. And I'm going to make another apron using coveralls. And I think these should be easier to do than the um, the jean shorts was. Because I'm not going to have to cut as much off. So if you got an old pair of coveralls that you don't want, you can make you some, uh, make you an apron with it. Just want to make sure I don't cut all the pocket off. Maybe I should turn it around the other way. Because I want to cut it, but I don't. I want to save the pocket because I want it left on my apron. And this is another experiment. I've never made one of these before, so. But I am going to leave my pocket. So I'm going to have to go back down the side and stitch it. To keep my pocket there. But I want to get both sides cut first. <laughs> and I should be able to make two aprons out of this. One going and one coming. <laughs> How's that? I just want to cut that thick seam off. And then we have to cut the legs. But I'm going to keep my 
Well, I got them all turned around. <laughs> I know I gotta flip it back over somehow. Well, we'll get the, the legs cut out of it first. Keep my pockets flipped up because I don't wanna cut them off. We're going to keep as much on the side as we can. But we don't want the leg on here, so we got to get that cut off. And then we'll be able to kind of separate these pieces, I think. I'm going to make sure I get them the right length. Um, this is just like the other one. I'm designing it as I go because I don't have a pattern for this. And I think it's going to be cute. I'm going to keep my pockets on here. Stitch those right up there. Let me go ahead and, and I'm going to keep my, suspender tops on there. Not suspender, but my coverall straps. Get this one untwisted. I want those straps left as long as possible. But then I'm going to cut them off. But I want them the same length. There. 
Now see, you can even take the back of these and kind of make a apron to the back. But we're gonna work on the front right now. Get that one out of the way, because I don't think I've got enough trim to do two. So we're gonna sew up the two sides. Well, not the sides. We're going to sew the seam that we just cut. We're going to sew that down. Because we want to keep that pocket. And it doesn't matter what color thread you're using. It's all good when you're sewing something like this. So the other side, so the pocket down. Because we want our, our apron to keep our pockets. The pockets that came with it, with these, we don't want to cut them off. And really, this is kind of simple to make. Because you already got your bib. <laughs> All you got to do is add your tie, your ruffle around your skirt. And you've got, and your, you know, your extended tie on your um, shoulders, the shoulder straps. And you've got a really cute little apron. And doing all my cooking videos, I need cute little aprons. <laughs> I really do. I'm going to cut just a little bit more off of this because I don't want that little dip right there that's in the center where the crotch was. I want that off of there. 
but I'm trying to be real careful not to cut too much off. And I definitely don't want to cut my pocket off, which I almost did. So maybe one pocket come down lower than the other. But that's okay because I can just stitch that right up. Stitch it right up and no one will ever know the difference. <laughs> Just that easy. Let me measure these. I'm not sure I got, got them the same length. Or they may not have had them the same length to begin with, you know. as good as it's going to get. But I'm going to put my ruffle around it, kind of starting up here at the waist and down. And then I'm going to put the, add a tie strap with this pretty material up at the top. I always say, don't overthink it, you know? And I think these two strips will be enough, hopefully, to go around my skirt. covered up my scissors. There they are.
And I'm just going down here and I'm hemming it. Where I want it hemmed at. y'all enjoy watching people make stuff. <laughs> Because <coughs> I enjoy making stuff. Designing stuff. Just, just off the top of my head, usually. And I had mentioned making an apron, the first apron, out of my little coverall shorts. And one of my viewers said, oh, no, that's too hot. Don't make them out of coveralls. So I went ahead and made, made the first apron out of the blue jeans. But this one I'm making out of my little coverall shorts. Which I think is going to be adorable.
got to get all the way around this little ruffle. start the ruffle right about here well we can start it all the way up at the top because that's where that's gonna go so let's do that let's start it up at the waistline I think it'll look better starting it at the waistline. It's a little bit thick. <laughs> thread <clears throat> couldn't get hold of the bottom of it so
That's the thing about sewing through blue jeans, especially at the seams where they're real thick. You have a tendency to either break your thread, you, sometimes you'll break your needle, or sometimes it just won't sew it. Okay, come on. <laughs> there, finally. That's way too long. About to lose my little footstool down here. I mean, my foot pedal, not stool. Come on, let's go. It may break again. to that hump. Let's see what we can do about it. Come on, I don't want to break my needle. broke my thread again. That is the problem with sewing something like this. You never know if it's going to go all the way through or not. And that's a little hump right there. It's a little thick seam that was on there from where they originally made the, the uh, little jeans. So But we'll get it done. It'll take a few tries. But we will get it done. <laughs> Almost. I got a needle threader on here and it's so much easier to thread the needle with that needle threader. Now let's see. If we can commence with this. But that little section right there is extremely hard. And I'm just pleating this as I go, just like I did the, the one I made before. I will put in my little label because I'm, you know, I didn't make the little jean shorts, but I do, I am designing my apron. So I will put my designer tag. on my apron as I sew it in.
Ever feel like you need about three or four hands instead of one or two? That didn't sound right. I know I've got two, but have you ever needed more than two? I have many times. Like right now, I could use an extra hand or two. Now I gotta get around that little corner and I'm just gonna do it by gathering up a bunch of little gathers. And I know you can't see it. But that's what I'm doing. I'm getting up a bunch of little gathers to go around that corner. Because if you don't, it's not going to go around the edge very well. <laughs> it's not going to look right either. Sometimes I raise, I'm telling you what I'm doing as I go, so you'll kind of understand what I'm doing. I raise the presser foot up once in a while to get a gather under the presser foot. Because I'm gathering this as I go, y'all. I don't, I haven't got it gathered already. Most people would have a million pins in this, and I just never like to do it with pins.
I think this is going to be adorable. <laughs> Even though the girl said not to make it out of um, coveralls, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to look prettier than the other one did. I really do. But that's just my opinion. really don't want to sew that pocket in there. I know I sewed the other one in, but I don't want to sew this one in if I can help it. Maybe part of it. coming to this other corner. Hope y'all are still with me. <laughs> the little corners can be tricky. Can get real tricky. Just going up the other side. Y'all, I've never, 
<coughs> sorry about that. But I'm breathing this lint. I've never made blue jean aprons before. Not out of coveralls, not out of blue jeans, nothing. Now, let's see. Yeah, we were going to go all the way up. Oh, man, I'm so glad I didn't cut that off. <laughs> I was just before hacking that off. I want to go all the way up to the waist, not in right there. If I can get past that hump right there, I'll have it made. <coughs> we got a little bit of a hump. Not sure it's going to make it without breaking my thread. Yeah, it just broke. <laughs> I need stronger thread, but this is the thread I got. So y'all just have to bear with it breaking. And me just starting over. But that's the way it works, you know. That's just the way it works with these kind of things. already broke again the first time I stuck it down in there. I might have to sew by it. Oh, and I don't know where the end of the thread is, so I have to pull it up every time. know why it's breaking up here. Almost to the end of the ruffle, and it's got a break on me. This one. 
this coming through there pretty thick. I mean, pretty tight. But, that's the way it's got to be, I guess. Oh, come on. Know if I moved it over, if that would help any. We'll see. I have to lose my foot pedal down here. It gets to that hump and it don't want to go without breaking the thread. Let's see. Get by that little hump, we'll have it made. That's one reason people don't like to sew blue jeans. Because unless you've got a really heavy duty, and this is supposed to be a heavy duty machine, and probably if I had a thicker thread, it would work better. But I'm going to have to cut some of this off because I'm all the way up at the top where I need to end. Gotta hem the little end up. What is this? wonder my presser footer was giving me a problem right there but what I'm doing right now I cut that end off because it was too long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hem that little end up before I finish sewing it because I, I want a finished edge on this end Just that quick.
I don't know if I'm going to be able to sew through that. just broke my thread again. I'm going to have to get me some stronger thread. That's all there is to it. This stuff is not not holding up under this stuff. there and I pulled it out with my finger. Let me go figure that. Oh, come on. <laughs> Y'all, bear with me up there. Thank God for needle threaders. going on with it. I think I'm going to have to get some more. You know what? Something is going on with the bobbin. That's what it is. Something is going on with the bobbin. If your bobbin is not working correctly, then that can affect your sewing. Let's get that thread up. Because there, we've got it all the way around. 
Now I just need to go around and top stitch it all the way around. And hopefully that will be easier to do than sewing it the first time. <laughs> hopefully. Not necessarily. right there. This is the same problem we had the first go round, going through this same side. So we'll see what's going to happen. If we can get by this section right here, we'll have it made. I'm being extra careful because I don't want to break my needle. <laughs> Breaking the thread is one thing, but breaking your needle is something else. And hopefully if we can get by this one section, the rest of it will be easy. just broke the thread <laughs> but at least I caught the tail of it well I pulled it and it broke I do a lot of talking to myself when I'm sewing y'all I gripe it myself. Tell myself off <laughs> if things don't go right. But you can see this was not staged and I'm not cutting all the bad parts out. <laughs> I have problems sewing through blue jeans too. Even though I do it. it will get easier from here on in. And all we're doing is going by here and top stitching the, the um, the ruffle so it lays flat. So it doesn't, I mean not lay flat, but it opens up. It doesn't curl up toward the blue jean. Yeah, 
Yep, I think my thread broke again. It did way back there. Y'all, I don't know what it is with this thread. But my thread's not cooperating, as you can see. Little buddy's at the door. Let me let him in. He's wanting his supper. You got food in your bowl. Go eat it. I'm not giving you no more. No, I'm not giving you no more. Buddy, what are you doing? You know where the food is, don't you? But you ain't getting no more. You got some over here in your bowl. Yeah, you do. sewing over that real thick seam. <laughs> that was what the problem has been. broke. <laughs> I'm sewing away and my thread broke again. I don't know. It's like
I think the needle did get a little bent, even though I don't didn't realize it. I think that may be why it's been breaking on me. Let me get, see if I can get this needle out. It doesn't look bent. If it's bent, it's so slight that you don't notice it, but the needle threader won't go down on it. So let me just go see if I can find me another needle for this machine. Little buddy, I can't walk because you're right in front of me. <laughs> He's right at my feet, so I can't even walk. He's afraid to get away from me because he's afraid he's going to miss something. I got more needles here. Let's try this one. This might work a little better.
No, it wasn't the... For some reason... There it is. My needle threader was not working correctly. And I thought it was the needle. So it may not have been that needle at all, but I've got it, it's in the machine, so I can pull it out and use it again if I need to. Now, let's see, where was we? We were on the top stitch in somewhere. Buddy, you want to go right back out? He's come in and he's eating. He's ready to go out. Go. I tell you, he's worse than a child. I can't do anything for him. <laughs> I mean, he's just right in my face every time I try to do something. I think he wants to be a part of everything. Now, let's try this again. again because it went through a thick part. <sighs> we'll get it eventually. But see, this is the reason most people do not want to sew blue jeans. Old blue jeans or old blue, uh, old, um, coveralls. It's exactly why, because they're, they are a little difficult to sew. got to get on fast here. Thank <laughs> you. 
I got a habit of putting all my strings over here and then I get them in my scissors. <laughs> You see, I did make it all the way around. So see, I got it on the skirt, finally. And now we gotta make the, uh, let's see. The tie that goes through the center and then goes on around to make the sash in the back. And I'm probably gonna need three cuttings of this, maybe even four, I don't know. three will do it. I'm thinking. Yeah, I think three will be long enough for the tie.
Now, I'm going to start at the center of it. I'm find the center. And I'm going to start folding it over and sewing it. That way I don't have to flip it over. Because it doesn't have to be a wide sash. And I may have to stop and fill my bobbin. <laughs> my bobbin looks like it's about to run out. Yeah, I'm not making a wide sash to tie it. I'm, I just want one big enough to make a tie to go around to the back to tie the apron on. about time for some more of my uh, fire cider, I think. Because I breathe this little bit of fuzz that comes from the machine. You, you don't think it does throw up fuzz and lint, but it does when you're sewing. <laughs> bothers my allergies, but it hasn't been bothering me as bad since I've been using that fire cider. Oh, there's my water. I gotta take me a swig of water. 
<laughs> Y'all bear with me. That is good, y'all. Water is good. I know some people might want me to go live doing something like this, but I've got too many people that would put their input in it telling me I should do it this way or I should do it that way. And I don't want to be influenced by other people's opinions. I want to do and design what I want to design, make it the way I want it. If I was going to make it the way somebody else wanted it, well, they'd be paying me to do it. So I hope that answers some of people's questions of why I don't go live to do this. I don't cut anything out of my video. If I break a needle, you see it. You saw how many times I was breaking the thread a while ago. That's not going to be cut out. You see everything I do in making this apron from this pair of coverall shorts. The only difference is I don't have other people's opinions coming into chat that I've got to watch to interfere with what I want to do. So that's enough said about that. Oh, my nose is itching from the lint.
I may have enough thread in there on that bobbin to do the other side of this sash. We're finding out. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I don't appreciate people's comments or their suggestions, but when I'm in a designing mode, I'm only thinking about what I'm thinking about. I don't want to think about other people's opinions. Does that make sense? Because if I thought about other people's opinions when I'm trying to design something, then it interferes, and then it's not my design anymore. And I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. It's just the way it is. And these may end up on Poshmark for sale. I don't know. I kind of like them. I might keep them a while. And then I may decide to sell them later. If I make more of them, then, of course, you know, I'll start selling more of them. I did sell one apron on Poshmark already. People loved it. I think my bobbin just ran out. Yeah, it did. Almost had enough to do it all.
we're ready to continue. Hope I'm not boring anybody. <laughs> but this is the process of um, designing. I mean, you know, you design it, you got to make it at the same time. Make sure it's going to look right. And if it don't, you got to rip it out and start over. I'll be wearing this one in my next cooking video. <laughs> So you can see how it looks. I think I'll probably like this one better than the first one. Even though they're both going to be pretty. <laughs> and then the third one, I don't know how exactly I'm going to do that one yet. But believe you me, I'm going to come up with a way to do the, the back side of the, the uh, coveralls. I got this from my mom, y'all, and some of my ancestors that were designers. Or I would have, I could never do this. I mean, if it wasn't in my blood, probably. I just get an idea in my head and I go for it.
how that is doing that. Gotta take another swig of water. I don't know how long I've been doing this. Oh, we don't have too much more to do. Finish the sash, get it on, get it tacked down. Do the shoulder strap. And we'll be done with it. Red broke right at the end. Do you believe that? I don't know what's going on with the tension. Don't know what's going on with the tension here. And then, too, this thread is not very heavy duty. But I found most just regular sewing thread is not. Unless you get the actual heavy duty stuff. What is going on? What is going on with my 
it's not working right. don't know what the deal is with this. There it is. Finally, finally, finally. See if we can finish this now since we got right to the end and it had to stop Yeah, this is a heavy-duty machine, but it's not a heavy-duty machine like you find in the um, factories. Where is the center of this one? Yeah, this sash is going to be plenty long enough. And it should have had a... But I'm just going to tack it down on each side over here. I mean, I really don't have to do that, but I'm going to do it. I'll tack it on each side. Ooh! <laughs> this just a little design feature to tack it down. Yeah, I've worked in blue jean factories. I worked in a blue jean factory. And you're never going to believe whose blue jeans I was sewing, working on. Gloria Vanderbilt. And that was before the label was even put on them. You couldn't even buy them in the stores yet. Nobody even knew who Gloria Vanderbilt was back when I was sewing the jeans. We were sewing the velvet jeans. 
all of those with Gloria Vanderbilt's name. And they said the jeans that we were selling would not even hit the market for probably another 15 to 20 years after we sewed them. Go figure that, y'all. <laughs> and sure enough, and this was about the time my daughter was a baby. Sure enough, about the time she, she was hitting to be a teenager, Guess whose jeans was on the the market and popular? Gloria Vanderbilt. Everybody wanted Gloria Vanderbilt. And those were the jeans that I sewed back way then, you know, way back then. And we, we sewed other other kind too. Not just the Gloria Vanderbilt jeans. My foot piece keeps getting away with me. Yep, that's all that needs. It's just to be tacked down. Oh, come on. <laughs> Nothing's cooperating with me here. So, there is the tie, and that's long enough that you can wrap it around the back of your butt and bring it back and tie it in the front if you want to. I may end up cutting it off, I'm not sure. But now, to figure out how I want to do these up here, they don't have to tie. Because it is somewhat adjustable. But I do want them as wide as that. So. Right there should be plenty wide enough. Yeah, we sew Gloria Vanderbilt's. All of those name brand, you know, the, the designer jeans. We sewed satin jeans, but they were all to be the designer labels that come out many years later. Now, let's see. How, how long do I want this? Because you can adjust it from the, the strap here. You can lengthen it somewhat or shorten it. So I kind of just wanted it to fit over the head and not tie behind the neck.
them adjusted there. Kind of where I want them to be. Let's see how to do this. I can kind of measure around my neck, I guess. And I don't have my measuring tape in here, but I do have my, my um, doohickey here. Mind me, y'all. <laughs> you see, right there is about where I want it to come. So I just need the piece to go around to the back and be able to adjust the strap because I can shorten it from the front. I think I need it but about 20 inches, really. Don't even need it that long. Gonna try it right there. I'm going to sew it on the outside. And then I'm going to fit it right onto that. <coughs> so y'all keep your fingers crossed that this is going to work. <laughs>
like I said, I may have this way too long. I may have to cut it down a little bit. But I gotta turn it first. I'm just getting this to lay flat, y'all. Really needs to be pressed open, but I don't have my iron in here. I wasn't sure how I was going to do the neck till I got there, so <laughs> I didn't have my iron in here. But we'll work it out. Got to fold part of it back up in there. Now, this is not cooperating. <laughs>
this has got to fit right onto that right there <laughs> Just like that. Get my trash can out this time, y'all. See, that went right on the end of that. I'm going to knock everything in the floor here in a minute. And then this one is going to go around and go on the end of this. I think I had some pins in here or safety pins or something. I need to borrow a safety pin a minute. <laughs> Let me see. I thought I had a box of them in here. Yep, I do, amongst everything else. I want to check this for the length of it that goes behind your neck. Before I sew it on, in case I need to cut it off some. <laughs> you see, you don't have to worry about tying it back there. You can just pull your... Your little uh, tabs. Just like you would if you, it was the overalls. Okay, why is my sash tied together in the front? <laughs> For those are the people that want a sash long enough that they can pull around and tie in the front. There it is. And I may end up just cutting that off. I don't know. Well, what's going on here? I know on some aprons they're like that, that you can pull them all the way in the front and tie them. <laughs> see here.
And see, I can tighten that up. I can cut that off a little. So you can have your little bib up there. And I may do that. That way, all you got to do is unhook your um, little straps. And it just needs to be cut off a little bit. Not much. <laughs> but I don't really like that long thing there, so I may cut it off. Pulled on my hair and got it down. <laughs> so I could pull that down just a tiny bit more. Cut this one off. Fold it up. Maybe even cut it more off more than that. I don't know. Because I don't want it too long. Because you can loosen your, your, the tightness by your cover all straps. I mean, you can't tighten it much more, but you can loosen it quite a bit. Cut a little more off of it. <laughs> I'm going to end up with too much off, I know. There, let me get this sewed on here.
that's just about right. And you can tighten them or loosen them a little bit depending on how tall or short you are. But that's about right for me. And I'm still debating whether I want to cut this off or not. <laughs> I know a lot of the aprons that I bought, like chef aprons, they come all the way in the front and tie like that because they're so long. But I don't know. What's your opinion on that one? But there's my coverall apron, y'all. Blue jean coverall apron. I think it's as cute as it can be. and even I, I'm, I can't even see it. I mean, I've got to go in there and look in the mirror to see it, but... There you go, y'all. My blue jean coverall apron. I think I like it. Fits me perfect. <laughs> and like I said, somebody tall, if they were wearing it, they could loosen the, the neck straps up. That's what these kind of things are made for on coveralls is so they fit everybody. You can loosen them or tighten them up. So there you go. My blue jean coverall, my, that was, that's my latest design right there. Never done it before. So I'm tired, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. See y'all my next one. Bye. Love y'all.